Welcome to another exciting episode of, well, an entirely new game. Today we have Torchlight 2, because, you know, I felt like playing something new today, and today should be Wednesday, depending on whether or not I actually get this uploaded in time. Well, let's start off by making a new game, shall we? So, upon character creation, we have... Lots of settings. I think I'm going to make a dude because I'm a dude. So we have the Ember Mage, trained in the arcane elements, arts. Ember Mages employ a variety of elemental spells to deadly effect. Then we have the Berserker, brutal and swift. Berserkers call upon powerful beast magic to augment their deadly combat skills. They also seem to be crazy and bearded. The Outlander, versed in arcane arts and ancient paths, Outlanders wield guns and magic with equal skill. And then the Engineer, equipped with ember-powered weapons and armor, Engineers keep the frontier in working order. I think I'm going to take the Engineer, because he, he never has to fight alone, even if you are alone. You know why? Robots. Lots and lots of robots. Alright, let's just randomize his features until we find something we like. Something dastardly and steampunk. I think I like that one. Alright, we need a name for this character. Tyrant. Sars. Checkmark. Now, we select a pet. There is the alpaca. Panther. Bulldog, Cat, Chakawari, The Stag, Papillion, Ferret, Hawk, Headcrab, Badger, Owl, Panda, and Wolf. I'm a big fan of badgers, but not honey badgers. I like American badgers with the stripes. The Headcrab is silly. <laughs> just, just silly. Hawk, ferret, pavilion. I believe this was a creature in the first game. Just, just a thing. It's llamas. I'll probably take the ferret, because he's got goggles. Two different appearances, black and brown. Hmm. I do like the brown. And his name shall be Banders. For those of you who know me, I have a set. I have like six names I use in all of my things. Casual, normal, or casual. It's great for players of all ages who favor fun action without deeper challenge. Bleh. Best for first time players, normal mode presents a wide range of challenges without requiring in-depth knowledge of the g game, but not the chats. Veteran mode is intended for players familiar with Torchlight if you... <coughs> if the challenges become too difficult, you may need to take extra time to improve your character's abilities to progress, or elite mode is for advanced or brave players. The monsters are significantly tougher and you may die often. The adventure will likely take more time than, your than in other game modes. We're probably going to go normal and not hardcore, because that's just silly. We're doing single player. Not feeling up for playing with other people at the moment. I may later. Who knows? If I'm feeling saucy. Cutsy. Deep beneath torchlight, a darkness gathered. Three heroes confronted the beast called Ordrock. Yet even in death, Ordrock's corrupted heart endured and called out. Very distinctive art style. To be honest, I don't really like it.
mage and warrior from the first game. It's just shooting everything. Oh, is the camera supposed to be us? Heroes may fall. Hope may fade. But new heroes will rise. Alright. There we have it. Torchlight 2. And here we are. We are in the world and it's all rainy. And I... <laughs> That's... Just silly. It is a click and run game. So, let's talk to this dude. Destroyer. You should carry on to the Asterian Enclave, but you're on your own. Warn them that the Alchemist destroyed Torchlight and is headed their way. He may be there already. And if he is, God help them. Okay, uh, what is it? M? Is that right? Yes. I like it over there. So, let's go kill us some bad guys, yeah? Act 1, the thing of something. So we have some really basic monsters. They're not too difficult, especially on normal. That's a gold. Ah, you should have clicked that. Very important. It will highlight everything on the ground, which makes the game much easier because you don't have to hold the alt. Is it alt? I think it's the alt. You don't have to hold the alt key for it to show them. But everything's basically one hit kill. Because this is the tutorial area. Left click to move and left click to pick everything up. Pretty simple, right? Right. And then, when it comes to tougher enemies, you right click and it'll activate your ability. It's right there, right there. It does this Flame Hammer, your weapon charge poses. Strikes, causing four flaming splinters to seek out enemies within five meters. If available, a charge will consume to generate two additional blasts. Torchlight 2 came with a new feature. It's the golden bar in the middle. Oh, level 2. Don't show tips, I know tips. This is golden bar in the middle. It's our charge bar. As we do combos and such, it will fill up and different things activate for different abilities, but if you are the uh, Ember Mage, when yours fills up, it makes all of your spells free for the duration of it, and yeah, pretty much. Maybe that's all you need, right? Is a mage free spells. What's up, dude? Saved my life. I thought these ratlins had my number for sure. Alright, we get nothing but this stuff. So we get a varmint stub. It's a pet tag. A healthy light cowl. Or a skillful polearm. Every every class can use any of the weapons, except some of them, like the Great Hammer, are needed for certain abilities. I'm probably gonna take the stub for my pet. I and P. And it 
cricket on my pet. So my pet has a pet tag. This so like belt is the exact same thing I have. This broadsword does more damage, but is is um I need the great sword for my flame hammer ability. All right, so. What we can get is another level up on our flame hammer, which will cause it to do more damage <coughs> and have a greater chance of burning someone. You could get heavy lifting, your skill with giant weaponry allows you to attack faster and adds a chance to stun your foes. Or we could get the Healy Bot. You deploy a small drone that generates energy pulses, healing both you and your allies. Bulwark, your expertise with armor lets you get the most out of it, increases effectiveness, and reducing any damage that actually gets through. Or Shield Bash, you smash your enemies in front of you, stunning them, slowing their attacks, and knocking them back. Damage is equal to five times your shield's armor value. Each charge you currently have provides additional 10%. Requires a shield, though. Sword and Board, your skill with a shield goes beyond defense and straight to offense, adding some of your shield's armor value directly to your melee attacks as physical damage. Requires a shield, also. I'm going to get the Healybot because I like to live. So what we do is we click here and assign it to our second one, and we can switch between the two by pressing tab. Now we assign our stat point. I like to put one into all of them, and then another one into one of them. Just so I'm well-rounded. Probably gonna put it into Strength, and then next time we'll put it into Vitality, because then they'll be at even. Alright? Cool. Onwards and upwards. <coughs> I should probably summon my Healy button now. Wah! builds, and it will keep spawning a ring, which will heal me, like that. And as we level it up, it will give us more health more often, and energy as well, sometimes. Kill everything. Ooh, armored War Beast. That actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. If we run past money, we automatically pick it up, but for items, we have to actually pick them up, which is troublesome at times because then we won't have enough space in our inventory. So we'll summon another Armored War Beast. Flame hammer just destroys everybody. No, nothing up here. Nothing except enemies and experience. <coughs> Pardon me. I think our flame hammer has slight homing capabilities, which is nice. And we get to allocate more points! Like I said, two into that, and one into all of the other ones. And then, we're probably going to put another point into Healybot. Once we get to level 7, we unlock the second thing. And then so on and so forth. Every five points we put into a skill, Gains that skill additional abilities. Such as when the Healy Bot has 5 points, it, it uh, gives us mana with the thing as well. Which I think our Healy Bot is gone. So we will summon another. Then switch back to our Flame Hammer. What we picked up was a golden key, which we need to unlock the golden chest in this area. They're usually hidden on giant boss monsters like we just fought, or... Ah, 
physical chest or little sprites which are just floating around the area and difficult to find. <laughs> the death flinger. Flinging death at me. It's not really working though. It's not all too effective. These guys though, these archers, really annoying. Can be very deadly at times. Alright, picking up potions from the dead vanguard peoples. There. We've explored the entire map, continuing on to the Enclave. And here we are, we're at the hub. The hub world thingy. Of. well. The beginning of Torchlight 2. It's like the first place in Diablo 2. I thank you for your warning, but it has arrived too late. This alchemist has already come and gone, and it was all I could do to prevent him from entering the Enclave. As it was, many Estelians were injured, and since the confrontation, several more have become ill. We are not sure what is causing it. After his assault failed here, the alchemist carried on southward toward the Temple Steps. Commander Vale and her vanquishers arrived a short while later and pursued him, hoping to prevent further damage. Alright, we'll receive 280 gold and 1400 experience. We could get the Superior Warcaber, which is a Great Hammer, the Deflecting Heater, a Shield, or the Superior Hand Cannon, which we are going to take because... Some of our next skills will require a cannon, and they're kind of hard to find. Guardian of Water. Most likely. It's usually how it is. 467 gold and 1200 experience for this. Alright, we're going to equip the cannon. We press W to switch our weapon sets, and we equip the cannon. We have found a Savage Farmer Shotgun, eh? A Crude Cannon, and a Spark Ember Spec. We're going to go sell those weapons, because we don't need them. Hello, lady. Here, you can have the broadsword, the belt, shotgun, and the crude cannon. We're keeping the amber spec, because those are valuable. Alright, show. we're going to stuff it into our stash. Where'd it go? Ah. These tabs, these tabs are difficult to navigate sometimes. And then we're gonna go pick up the next quest. You a new recruit? If you're going out to the temple steps, I could use your help. These Darm Baron have set up makeshift smithy there, and they have two blacksmiths making suits of armor for wild war beasts they have captured. The Darm Baron seem to be working from schematics, but they keep them under lock and key. Don't you think you might be able to get in there and grab the armor schematics? Most likely, that does sound like quite some fun. Get 893 gold and 2,000. 60 experience. Plus a choice of some pants, a shirt, or a hat. And we'll accept that. So we've unlocked the waypoint portal, which we're going to need if we ever want to get back here quickly. Fishing quickly? Caught the largemouth bass. Fish are really weird. You feed a fish to your pet and it becomes a monster for like a minute or two. Can be really good at times. <coughs> see, as you see here, we can't use the flame hammer because we don't have a great hang great great uh, hammer. The cannon is like a big shotgun, like a really big shotgun. I don't like it as much, but what am I gonna do? I'm actually probably going to stop it here before I get to the next area 
because uh, it's been 20 minutes and it's a pretty big area. So, until next time, we have the Temple Steps, or er, Temple Steps quest via the Path of the Honored Dead, or something like that. Until next time, farewell. <laughs>